All right. Haven't done a long video in a while, and even though it's shorts weather, dudes, I've been making a lot of shorts. Anyway, time for a long one. This big bitch runs, drives, still got the straight eight. For sale. Pulling motors, trans. Got a 534L80 for the C10, which will go in here, obviously. Now I gotta decide if I want a tower notch like I always do, and then four link, which I already have. Uh, or go ahead and not only take the 12 inches out I need to take out here, take it out here and Z the frame, the entire frame, and then I'd have to... Uh, Z it back here, but I got to take eight inches out back here anyway to realign the bumper output. But then the bed floor will all be raised up, whatever that three inches or uh, probably going to be three inches um, just to get the axle, you know what I mean? So when the tires are on it, that part of the frame can sit on the ground. And the axle will just barely be touching. Hopefully have a lot of room because I tend to do smaller tires. And if I ever decide to do something bigger, that whatever's below the spindle is going to push that up. And then it won't, you know. And then, yeah, 350, 350 combo for sale. 14 bolt for sale. Tank for sale because I'm going under bed to the tail light click click i'll show that in another video what else what else uh i think i'm gonna throw a mexican blanket over that for now so that then i'll have it running and driving and i can just get to the junkyard and get some cadillac seats with the heat and the leather and the armrest you know Cool. Get out of here, video message. So yeah, it's uh, coming along. Got to shorten the bed. That'll get rid of those. Probably gonna keep the tail light in the rear, on the side, the marker. You know what I mean. So I'll have to like, and then over here replicate that, and then but whatever. I want to reuse that. Just shorten it. Keep the bumper, huh? Yeah. She's got some some stank on her. I do believe I want to delete this and put the flip up license plate hidden receiver right there. And now I'm probably gonna turn that trailer into something cool. When I turn that into a scooter. Oh yeah. Stay tuned. But this old girl, that's the only bad spot. And then that. All right, and then that. And a little bit over there, but that'll, that's all treated with bull, like with some spray. And then I think, let me see, and there was a spot there. I'm not sure. <laughs> that looks like aluminum siding, probably. Anyway. I got some sheet metal I can might be deleting those anyway yeah. so might sit door on the on the ground haven't decided yet and then I'm not liking the whole Z in the front where all the weight is bouncing on that weld even though I know I trust the welds I've seen crazier shit that's welded um like structural steel and it's literally just tack welds i've seen crazy crazy amounts of weight put on the tiniest of welds and they they hold it's just uh people don't pay more attention to the metal you're welding to being the same thickness as the you know what i mean if like you weld a quarter inch tab onto the frame but the frame is only just over an eighth of an inch 
and there's any vibration on that tab at all, it's going like, you know, a coat hanger. These kids don't even know about metal coat hangers these days. Jeez. Today, lady. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, I don't want to Z the frame. That's right. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do, I looked at, you know, lowered cross members, changing this, changing that, welding on a Mustang. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Welding on a Mustang, too, like I normally do when I do four Lincoln bags in the rear. I'll just buy a Mustang 2 kit, and it just welds on. Um, but it, it's a whole cross member that's like a U shape that's already fabricated and it normally welds to the outside of the frame. So you're not cutting anything or destroying the structural integrity and integrity accessories or whatever, however that joke goes. So <clears throat> the old school way since these trucks have been around because the cross member, the stock cross member, I should say, sits approximately two inches lower than the re the low part of the frame. So, like I did with the 54 denim blue Bel Air that my buddy Tommy got, if you put it in in the stock location, like his Mustang too, if I'd have just welded it up per the instructions... When you air it out completely, this part of the flat part of the frame and the, the rocker will be sitting high in the front because the cross member is so much lower than the rest of the frame stock. So I had to basically take all of their measurements on where to cut the cross member to fit underneath and where to cut the top hat to fit on top, and I had to remove about three inches from that measurement and you know what I mean add it back to the top hat so if it told me to cut three inches out of the top hat I basically just welded them to the top of the frame anyway long story long <clears throat> instead of paying I think the cheapest one is like 1300 bucks for the cross member and 1300 bucks for all the other bullshit. So you're going to spend like 2500 bucks minimum plus freight cuz it comes in fucking huge boxes anyway. That's more than I paid for the whole goddamn truck. So the old school way is to pancake the stock cross member and of course I have it fucking buried. But look it up. That's where it mounts to the bottom of the frame and bolts go through it. And then there's holes in the side of the frame that bolts go through. So you basically just cut, it's kind of dark, but you cut straight down and then over and you remove a two inch strip all the way to the other side and you do the same thing on the back and then you drop the whole thing down making it two inches shorter which raises the bottom of it because it's still going to bolt to the frame so essentially what's happened is the part that bolts to the frame stay in there you cut two inches around it and then you move the whole cross member up to fill the gap and weld it back in you do it on the floor obviously so then that's welded in and everything's two inches higher and you got to redrill some holes because the outer holes are going to be up higher two inches. But also on these, a lot of the kits will move it one inch forward because one, the wheels kind of, they're kind of towards the back of the wheel well on the stock opening on the fender. Okay, so... Just for looks, you'd obviously want it to be right at the center of the arch part because it kind of swoops in the back. So everybody moves them forward an inch, but also because when you go to a bigger wheel and tire, it starts taking up more room and you go to turn and it starts hitting the cab, etc. So moving it forward an inch will help with that as well. So then you gotta come in here before you put everything back together 
and you need to map these out and move these forward one inch, a full inch, and redrill them. These will have to go up and forward, as well as these. But these, I think, yeah, at two inches, you end up running out of daylight. So you probably end up putting, you know, an L bracket here and drill some holes. And that way that's supported. And then if you're really smart, you go back in and maybe even put some box in there to, I don't know. The fact that I'm taking weight off of the vehicle I've, and, you know, I'm going to be shedding a ton of weight almost, uh, and this is a three-quarter ton chassis, so it'll be fine. Don't you worry about that. So we pancake the front, okay? That smushes everything up. That'll bring the lower control arm up, and it also brings the upper control arm up. So that's like a two-inch drop spindle, effectively, because it doesn't mess with the geometry. Everything's still where it's supposed to be, just two inches higher, okay? Then you add a two inch drop spindle to that, and then yeah, you got essentially a four inch drop with perfect geometry. The cab will be about three, four inches off the ground. Frame will be three, solid, four. Cab will be five, whatever. And that'll be cruise height, and your geometry will be perfect. But then you also only have to go down you know, three, four inches, and you're sitting on the frame, okay? But then, you know, with bags, you can also go three, four inches that way to raise it up for, like, putting on a trailer, going over a speed bump, whatever. All right. Running long. So, what's next? Oh, yeah. So then, of course, your steering box and all your steering linkage is going to be two inches too low. And that's going to cause bump steer because when the wheel goes up... Now it's going to be pulling on the tie rods and it'll it'll cause the wheels to either go in or go out depending on which way you are. I think if it's too low, it's going to be they're going to be too short already, so it's going to cause toe in. You're going to try and fix it. But then when you hit a bump, it's going to cause more toe in every bump cuz the the rods are below the anyway. So you need to bring that up. So then if you want to Z the frame and raise that whole pocket up two inches too, that's fine. Because all that's hanging off of that is the radiator and the front clip and the, the core support. That's not that bad. This z in back here, I don't like the idea of that. Because then you've got the whole motor torquing the frame this way while the whole body's torquing the frame this way. And that's just... I don't, I don't care how good your welds are. Eventually, not in my lifetime, probably, but eventually, that is going to crack. And that's why you don't see a whole lot of these for sale. I think they probably break, and the guy goes off a cliff into a tree or into an old lady's yard, kills their kid and their dog. But I think keeping that frame intact and then super-duper welding the one in the back because I'm never hauling a heavy load. I'll probably have, like, bicycles in the bed, <laughs> maybe an engine or a tranny occasionally, um, but I want to build a trailer for doing that, and you know, because it's going to be slammed. Anyway, so I'm going to pancake that, delete the steering so I'm not cutting the frame, and go ahead and do a rack and pinion because um, the only other option I liked and I'll tell you why I don't, was a $950 cross member that had the brackets already for 84, technically, to 96 C4 Corvette front suspension. And I saw one in New Mexico somewhere south of Alba Albuquerque. Albuquerque, yeah. South of Albuquerque, uh, that he wanted like 250 bucks for it. If I could have got down there and got it, that would have been great. I would have had Corvette control arms and spindle and replaceable hub with bearings. And then the, the rotor is not part of the hub, which I don't like. But that's another story for another day. And so I would have had to buy the Corvette front suspension and then pull all the parts off and then bolt it to this $950 cross member designed for the truck and blah, 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 blah. I could have probably built it, but for 950 bucks, like, anyway, it's a weld in. You get it in, so you could put it an inch forward. You could do whatever you wanted to do. 
but then now I don't like that idea. Uh, the 950 bucks. No, <laughs> obviously. The control arms. Most people see the C4 Corvette and they're like, oh my God, Corvette. But the control arms are like cast aluminum back in the 80s. You know, people were on a lot of cocaine. And if you know anything about aluminum, it has a life cycle. Like uh, that's why a lot of these airplanes, the whole, like they go convertible mode on takeoff or right before landing usually the whole top will just like shear off or the door and the whole thing around the door will just like because it's constantly vibrating you know like a suspension over these shitty colorado roads and that's the brunt of it right there it's getting yanked this way it's getting compressed it's getting torqued it's getting every type of load is getting put on those and eventually they're going to break. And guess what you get to replace them with? Either another set of stock ones that are probably ready to break. Or you buy the super expensive C4 Corvette tax. And buy some aftermarket shit to fit all the parts now. And you go to the AutoZone and you're like, I need brake pads. And they're like, for what? And you're like, fuck. A 1982 C4 Corvette. And they're like, 4 by 4 Or, I mean, uh, you know, what color interior? That doesn't matter, stupid. But then they're, you know what I mean, the same brake pads that probably came on a fucking Impala, but because you told them it's for a Corvette, they're going to be $320 a pair, whatever. So that's why I didn't like that idea. 950 bucks, aluminum, fatigue, stress, whatever. So if I'm going to spend any money, I might as well just spend money on the truck parts. I can put 73 all the way up to, I think, 92, even 99 with a little bit of work. But 73 to 87 bolts up. And I did the research. A C20, the only difference is the lower control arm has a bigger ball joint. But not just the part, the actual ball joint itself. So you can't just take it out and put the smaller ball joint for the C10, 73 to 87 brakes in it. Because, you know, I could just buy the 2-inch drop spindle and bolt it right up if I just change the ball joints. But the lower ball joint is not only bigger here, it's bigger here, and you can't just make that hole smaller. So you have to replace the entire lower control arm, that's fine, with a 7387 that has the smaller hole, smaller ball joint, smaller ball joint. Then you get the whole spindle, the brakes, blah, 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 lines. And then you might as well get a new upper control arm instead of replacing your ball joint with the smaller one because then you get the new bushings back here and blah, 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 and everything's brand new. So you pancake it, brand new 73 to 87, cut the a little bit out of the frame there to clearance for the tie rods for the rack and pinion, and then like I did on the Bel Air, just do a heim joint, heim joint, heim joint, boom, done. Huh? There's a long one. Leave me alone. Go watch some shorts. Hell, get an OnlyFans account. I don't care. Thanks for watching. Keep on modding. Turn off, you bitch. Only for the true mechanics. Rocker Pat! Hit me up. Text me your address. I got another large. Yeah, buddy.